Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Is first cousin marriage allowed according to the Quran? For the past couple of weeks, I've been seeing these comments, uh, either asking or claiming that uh, is the does the Quran actually prohibit people from marrying their first cousins, and that according to Surah 33 verse 50, it was only the Prophet Muhammad who was allowed to marry his first cousins, whereas for the remainder of the believers are not allowed to marry their first cousins. That is the claim that is being made. So let's address this claim. Now before we look at Surah 33 verse 50, let's go to Surah 4 verse 23. This verse gives us a list of the forbidden categories for marriage. Okay, so let's read it. God says, Forbidden for you are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, the sisters of your father, the sisters of your mother, the daughters of your brother, the daughters of your sister, your foster mothers who suckled you, and your sisters from suckling, and the mothers of your women and your stepdaughters who are in your lodgings from your women with whom you have already consummated the marriage. If you have not consummated the marriage, then there is no sin upon you. And those who are in wedlock with your sons who are from your seed, and that you join between two sisters except what has already been done. God is forgiving, merciful. Now note, this is quite an elaborate list. And nowhere do we read anything about first cousins. Nowhere do we see something that says uh, the daughters of your uncle or the daughters of your aunt, right? So there's no mention of cousins here. Moreover, if we look in the next verse, God is continuing. And he says, and permitted for you is what is beyond this. What is beyond this list? So God has given us a list, and then he tells us, permitted for you is what is beyond this list. So this should be crystal clear, that, mar that, that since God does not mention first cousin marriage, then it is perfectly permissible to marry your first cousin. Okay. Now we're not talking about, you know, now modern days and today, now these days people say, oh, it's gross. It's your relative, all that stuff. But this was a very common thing back in the day. Okay. And it still is in some countries today. So anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about what does the Quran allow and not allow. When it comes to first cousin marriage, the God did not prohibit it. And in fact, he says permitted for you is what is beyond this list. Okay. So first cousin marriage is permissible according to the Quran. Now let's go to Surah 33 verse 50. Now it's important to understand that when we read this verse, this verse is talking about the dowry, specifically the dowry, marriage dowry. And God begins by addressing the prophet. He says, Ya ayyuhan nabi, which means because he's using the word nabi, prophet, it means that God is addressing the prophet when he was alive, things that pertain to him when he was alive. Then God tells him, We have made lawful for you the wives to whom you have already given their dowries. Okay, so again, we're talking about the dowries and marriage and dowries. We have made lawful for you the wives to whom we have already given their dowries and those who are maintained by your oath as granted to you by God. And now I invite everybody to watch my video that's titled Ma Malakat Aymanukum, which is translated as maintained by your oath here. Okay, so again, God is talking about the dowry and marriage. We have made law for you the wives to whom you have already given the dowries and those who are maintained by your oath as granted to you by God. Then he says, and the daughters of your brother of your father and the daughters of the sisters of your father and the daughters of the brother of your mother and the daughters of the sisters of your mother, those who immigrated with you. So God here is talking about what? The prophet's cousins, the prophet's first cousins. And God is telling the prophet, you may marry your cousins who specifically have immigrated with you. This is what this category of cousins is, is God is talking about. It's not talking about 
uh, an exception that the, that the believers cannot marry their cousins or anything like that. God is telling the prophet, you can specifically marry the cousins who specifically emigrated with you. This is the cousin, these are the cousins that you are allowed to marry. Then God says, also, the believing woman who had decreed herself to the prophet, the prophet may marry her if he wishes as a privilege given only to you and not to the other believers. This is a different category than the cousins that are mentioned. This category specifically says that a woman, okay, singular, if a woman had decreed herself to the prophet, that means she did not ask for a dowry or she does not want a dowry, the prophet in this case may marry her if he wants to as a privilege given only to the prophet and not to the believers. So the privilege that is given to the prophet is not about marrying his cousins. It is about not paying the dowry for a woman who does not demand a dowry. According to the Quran, all believers are required to pay the dowry for marriage. This is why in the next phrase it says, we have already decreed their rights in regard to their spouses and those who are maintained by their oaths. Okay, This is to spare you, Muhammad, any hardship. God is forgiver, merciful. So the, uh, the, the privilege that is given to the prophet is not about his cousins. It's, uh, it's about specifically a woman who does not want a dowry for marriage and the prophet can marry her. In our case, we have to pay a dowry even if she doesn't want one. Okay, So this is what this verse is talking about. It has nothing to do with uh, this claim that uh, the prophet was, allowed, was the only person allowed to marry his cousins and everyone else was not. That's not what this verse says. So I pray that this has clarified for you what is the Quranic stance in regards to first cousin marriage. Wassalamu alaikum.